All right, well, welcome everybody. I'm Brandon Bruce. Um, I'm the co-founder, or as I like to call myself, the chief cat herder uh, at Uncat. I'm joined by uh, by Mike Roberts, who's with Asset Accountant. And um, Mike, do you want to inter introduce yourself and, and tell everybody a little bit about Asset Accountant? And Mike's going to start us off today. So we're going to see the full soup to nuts <laughs> demo talking all about fixed asset depreciation. So put on yeah, your seatbelt. I'd, and let's I'd, be very, I'd be very happy to introduce myself. So. Um, I'm actually from the UK, as you probably picked up from that conversation with Kim, although I live in Australia now, which is where Acid Accountant is um, is based out of. So it originally started in Australia. We've been slowly building out various other countries and um, have now got some fairly good uh, content in from the IRS, so the US tax content. Um, just to complete the international flavor, I'm actually in Thailand at the moment. so. Um, it's a little bit earlier. It's one in the morning in Australia, so it's a bit more civilized here in Thailand. Um, so we have been, yeah, we've been going about five years. Um, we've got, um, I think we're, we're coming up to about 400 clients now on the product. It does accounting for our book depreciation and accounting for tax. So we've put the tax rules in for various jurisdictions. And we also do the, um, the lease accounting as well. So either a lease, an asset you're buying under lease, so a tangible asset, or if you have right of use assets. So some of you may be familiar with ASD 842, which is the new requirement for accounting for um, operating leases as though they were sort of, sort of long-term leases. And um, we were very lucky to be selected by Intuit as one of their partners, um, their app partners for a growth program that they pulled together. So we've been working very closely with Intuit to improve the integration and we were lucky enough to have some time with their product user experience and dev teams to um, to give us some input. And that's where we came across Brandon, who was also um, Uncap, we're also part of that program. And both of us have gone with cats as our branding. I think Uncat has a bit more logic to it, Asset Accountant. In Asset Accountant, we've just got a lot of people that like cats. So if you look at our website, yeah. I like it. who doesn't like cats and more importantly, pictures of cats <laughs> on website. I mean, this is like, this goes back to the beginning of the internet. So it's uh, yeah. Once we saw that our branding was so aligned and we're both part of the, the Intuit developer growth program, we had to do, we had to do some marketing together and do a webinar. So thank you all for, for being part of it. <laughs> the coolest cats in accounting. So we're doing this one in the U S time zone today. And then we've got one in the Australian one tomorrow. So. Yep, absolutely. No, we're excited about it. Uh, Mike, do you want to kick it off? Do you want to show folks asset accountant? And, and obviously, I mean, you got to show them some of the cat theme on the website too. <laughs> For anybody here who hasn't been to the website, it's, it's classic. I mean, well, maybe, really well done. Maybe I'll um, I'll start off with uh, asset accountant. Yeah, just give me a sec. I'll load the website up. Okay, yes. so I'm gonna just um, I'll I'll jump into asset accountant. I'll give um, I'll give you a quick demonstration. I won't do the full bells and whistles that I do um, normally for people, but I'll give you a sort of 15 minute run through of what it does and the functionality and so on. So with that, I will just share my screen. So if you give me one second, that should come up. So can you, just, I know you can probably see the screen. So this is our, this is our website. Love it. So we have a few pictures of cats. Yeah, that um, they're all. Oh, you can't actually see them all fully. Yeah, they're all sitting on computers and working. So, yeah, <laughs> these are our cat. These are our cats. So the other, um, the other cat. Um, oh, actually, sorry. Let me just refresh that here. The other uh, cat thing we have is we have. I think it's in the help system here. So we have. We don't have a chat bot. We have a cat bot over here so um this is our artificial intelligence for help so you can ask questions for asset accounts and, and then kit our friendly cat bot will uh will go and answer them for you so we even have a cat in the uh, in the product itself <laughs> nice <laughs> like um it. so anyway i'm uh, so so what you're looking at here is you're looking at a fixed asset register within asset accountant and I suspect most people here are accountants or have had a fair amount of exposure to accounting. So you'll be familiar with uh, the look of this. So down the left-hand side are the asset groups. So these are the, the groups that the assets are in. And then across the top is the movement in the period you're looking at. So I'll just go to a calendar year. 
for you. So for calendar year 23, the, you can see the movement in the book value for the assets under each of these groups. Um, up here at the top right, you can toggle between the book view and the tax view. So every time you bring an asset in, you tell the system what the treatment the book the treatment is for depreciation for book and what the treatment is for depreciation uh, for tax and it will do the calculations for both of them we've got the irs methods built in which i'll show you uh, i'll show you shortly and then the other toggle button up here is the uh the period you want to look at so you've got the month to month up here if you want to look at months or year to date or full financial years or you can you can choose custom periods if you want to um, you can expand some of these, so you can expand the columns here. You can see the cost accumulated depreciation that makes up the book, the book value. Similarly over here, you've got things like acquisitions and transfers in as well. So um, there's there's more detail there. And you can also open up the asset groups to see the actual assets themselves in the, uh, in the register there. Um, if I go into one of the assets, so I'll just go into this server. Every asset has its own screen. Here, so you can see it's got the method uh, for accounts here. So at the top, there's the name and the, the code and the, the description of the asset. And then you've got an accounts tab, which shows it's 40% declining balance um, with the information in here. It's got the date that you bought it and first used it with the, the cost and so on. And then this schedule here shows you every item of depreciation per, by month over the, the course of the life of the asset. So you can just look at more transactions and you can just keep seeing how this asset's going to be depreciated over the fullness of its life. And that's assuming that there's no changes like a sale or partial sales or additional costs and so on. Um, so that's for accounts. And then there's a similar tab for tax here as well. So you can see this is a straight line method mid month straight line for five years. So that's 20% a year. So you can see the tax depreciation is done separately in the uh the tab here we've got something here called details so in the details tab we've got these three sections uh the the top one is classifications so in quickbooks those are class and location so there'll be things like profit centers or cost centers whatever you use those for so you can pull those into asset accountant and then you can actually have more classifications if you like in asset accountant so you can keep adding classifications and then the other thing you can do here is transfer them between different um, different classifications. So, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. He's still there? Oh yeah, he's still there. Yeah, yeah, still here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it had gone quiet. I was just, I had one of those moments of wondering whether I'd just lost internet connection. Just making sure you weren't <laughs> Yeah, I did, the I've, I've done that before. Yeah, um, sorry, yeah, I don't, okay. I'm not quite sure what's happened there, but um, normally it would give you the option to transfer the um, the asset. Let me give that another go. Uh, no, I don't think it's going to like it. I don't know what's going on there. Um, and then you can have these custom fields as well. So if you just want to store any piece of text to do with an asset, you can do that. You can have as many of those as you like. Um, and uh, so that could be things like users. So we've got some some of our clients use this to track the names of people who've got assets that they want to keep track of um, there. So they can do that through the, the custom fields. And then you can add attachments. So if you want to put receipts or invoices or copies of photographs, you can do that within there. Um, up here in the top right of the asset screen, there are um, a number of different menu items that you can take advantage of. So the um, the opening balance is what you put in when you're bringing an asset in partway through its life. So if you're, if you're using asset accountant and you've already started depreciating assets, which is true in most cases, you put in the original cost and the date and the method and it will calculate it, but that may not, that may not necessarily um, align with the calculations you've done before. So you can just always override that and then we just appreciate from the, the balance you bring in. Yeah, we have components. So if you have parent-child relationships between assets, we, we can support that. Quantities you can put in. So if you've got 50 chairs, you can put 50 chairs in, you can add a quantity and then that enables down here partial sales or partial write-offs. So if you do a stock take at the end of the year and you've only got 45 left, you can say you can partially write off that by saying you're writing five of the chairs off. You can use it for land or so on, anything really like that. Um, and then you can add a lease. I'll come back and I'll show you the leases when I add a new asset in. 
there's a couple of um, there's a, there's a couple of menu items here we've got. So one is transferring an asset between different asset groups. So you might transfer something from um, usually people use that for things like work in progress or assets under construction where you're building an asset. You leave it in assets under construction so you're not depreciating it. And then when it's ready to go into its useful life, then you move it into the correct asset group for reporting in there. So, so that's available there. And then you can also add additional costs to an asset. So if at some point during the course of the life of the asset, you have incurred some expenditure that you need to capitalize, you can just put that in here. Or if you're buying an asset piecemeal and you've got lots of invoices to add up, you can just keep adding the additional cost until you're ready to start depreciating it through that through that method there as well. Um, sales you can initiate here, so you can put in the date you sold the, the asset and the proceeds, and then the asset accountants will work out the profit or loss on the disposal. And then when we get to posting the journals, you'll see it'll post um, a it'll post an amount into a clearing account so you can do the, the bank reconciliation against the amount of proceeds that you get coming in. Um, in the individual tabs here, so where it says add, there are some items you can do here just for accounts. So this will just apply to the book numbers. So that'll be something like a reassessment if you wanna change the method or if you wanna change the, the life of the asset. So that quite often happens that you'll re review your assets. You'll say this asset's gonna last longer than I thought. So you wanna do a reassessment or sometimes you want to immediately write off the balance. So that's another reassessment to write it off. You can do that there. You can do things like impair assets. So you can reduce the value of the asset. And then we do the calculation to um, prevent you over unimpairing at the time that you, you want to do that. And then there are also the ability to make adjustments. So um, for, for any reason, you can just some, you can just change numbers for any reason if um, if you need to, just because there's always edge cases that people have. Um, and then similarly for tax, there's options here for reassessing, adjusting, or taxable use adjustments if you need to make those in the um, in the tax register. Okay, so so that's the individual asset screen. How that looks. Um, do feel free to ask any questions. Obviously, it's not a it's not a massive group. So if anybody has any questions as we go, please please shout out. Um, yeah, feel free to shout them out, or if you throw them into the the chat window, Mike and I can see them there, and I can always kind of flag them uh, if Mike's in the middle of presenting something. I'll I'll insert it. So you got the chat or, or yeah, you can unmute and jump yeah. in. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Brenda. Um, over here in the reports section, we've got uh, a suite of reports that are, are standard reports. Um, and for any of these, there's all sorts of reports. There's, so there's the export, which is a big dump of all the data into Excel. And then you can have summary, the, the summary by group. The asset schedules shows the method compared to book and tax, disposals, forecasts acquisitions and then there's a number of reports that people use for leasing as well for if they're using us for leasing so i'll just show you what one of those looks like so if you're going to if you're going to run a report you choose if you want to look at it for tax or for accounts and then the period and then you can either get it in pdf or csv so all of these reports can come out either in pdf or csv depending on if you want to do work with them or if you want to send them off and make them look nice so you can see here, this is what the PDF looks like for the asset summary, where you've got the um, the assets under their, their asset groups. There you can actually put your logo on here if you want to do that as well. Um, the other way you can get information out here is in this assets tab. So this is a big long list of the assets rather than by group. Uh, and there's a number of things you can do in here. So you can look for assets by name or you can search by the code um, of the asset. The other thing you can do is filter it. So if you want to say, show me all my computers in uh, Topeka. Do I have any computers? No, I don't have any computers in Topeka. Show me all my computers in Chicago. There we go. And then we've got computers in Chicago. Um, so you can do that. And then you can actually choose the columns you want to look at here as well. So you can effectively create your own reports if you need more information or something to look different than in standard reports. So if you want to look at the life, you just choose that, that'll appear. And then you can export those uh, that report through here. So you can export just the columns that you've got displayed, or you can export everything, all the data. And then um, the other thing you can bring out then are these templates. So there's a number of those actions that I showed you in the, in the individual screen that you can do in bulk. So if you are disposing of a large number of assets, for example, 
then you download the bulk disposal template. That will give you a spreadsheet template to fill out. So this will just open up. And then once you've got the list of the assets in here, then you um, all you need to do is for the, for the assets that you sold or you wrote off, you just put the disposal date and the proceeds in the spreadsheet. And then you can save that spreadsheet with that information and then you can upload it here in the bulk actions tab so you just upload a bulk disposal import that spreadsheet and then the system would dispose of all those assets in one go so that saves you having to go through um the 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 uh, the manual process of disposing each asset manually and we have clients that use that for use that for hundreds of assets um, so it saves them a lot of time doing um doing that nice okay so um what I'll do now, I'll just show you the asset group and then I'll go into QuickBooks and I'll bring an asset in from QuickBooks and show you how that comes in. Um, actually, just a question. Oh, I did do a journal. Yeah, great. So, all right. So in the asset group screen here, so I'll go into the computer equipment group screen. What you'll see is uh, information about the asset group at the top. So you can put the name, the description, and then you can have a parent group. So you can have a hierarchy within there. And then there's default depreciation methods. So you can see for computer equipment here, there's the tax default depreciation is this method. So those of you who know anything about tax will recognize these methods as being the IRS methods. Um, so there's all the standard methods um, under makers, I think it's called, um, in, including section 179 claims if you want to make those um, and bonus depreciation. If you want to apply bonus depreciation to that, you can just tick that there. And then you just choose the life so you can see all of that information there. And then the accounts default appreciation here is two years straight line. Um, and then down here at the bottom, this is where it's connected to QuickBooks. So you can just edit this. And this is where you do the mapping into QuickBooks. So you pull over the asset um, from the asset clearing account and um, and then the cost account. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what's going on there. That's... Yeah, OK. So, um, so that's how the... Um, the mapping from from QuickBooks is managed. So, what I'm going to do in this Add Assets section here, there's because this um, register is connected to QuickBooks Online, it'll go and interrogate the the clearing account, the draft clearing account for assets, and you can see there's nothing in there. So, what I'm going to do now is go into QuickBooks and I'm going to add my oh sorry, add an expense. So, I'm going to create an expense which will be a new asset that I'm buying. So um, what should we buy? Let's say we're going to buy a laptop from Cal. So that's going to go into my clearing account. So the asset clearing account. So that's, let's say we're going to get Brandon a new laptop. Yes. This is my <laughs> and, favorite part of the demo. And well, let's go to town. Let's get $5,000. I do sometimes buy Teslas, but I'm in the computers today. So you're going to have to, right. have to manage with a laptop. So, so Brandon's new laptop is now saving QuickBooks. So I come into asset accounts. I'm just going to refresh the draft assets. And you can see here that that's now appeared in here as a draft asset. So it's pulled through the date, the cost from QuickBooks. And then I can just add the asset here. So everything is here that I need. I can put custom fields in. And then the only thing I need to do is say which asset group that goes into. So I'm going to say that's a computer. Over here, then, you have the defaults that I showed you. So you can override those defaults at this point if you like. So if you don't want to use the defaults, you can just check, you can just choose from that full list, um, apply those. There's also a lookup tool. So um, I think we have to look up the computer here. So this is the, like the IRS um, data around that. And you, so you can use that and you can override if you need to. And similarly for accounts. So you can make that two years, you can make it diminishing value, whatever you like. So um, I'll do that in there and then I'm gonna save that. So that's now disappeared from draft assets. And then if I go into the assets screen in here and I open up computer equipment, you'll see we've got an addition there for Brandon's sparkly new $5,000 laptop and it's started to depreciate here. So that's how much depreciation has gone through this year or will go through this year. I'm looking at the, the calendar year. Um, so that's done. So let's just say that was the only asset I bought this month and now I'm going to, now I'm going to create a journal to the end of September. So I've actually created one already earlier so that it's it's cleaned out. So you can just see the journal relating to that asset I bought. 
So what this asset has, or what this journal will do, is it'll move the $5,000 from the clearing account and it'll put it into the cost account that I've chosen. So in my uh, QuickBooks integration, I've um, connected that to computers at cost. And you can see if I want to have a look at the detail behind that and what lap, what assets are going in there, I can just say show details and that'll show me Brandon's new laptop there. So if I'm happy with that, I can then just post that journal into QuickBooks just um, in the API. We do that. So you can see there that journal's now been posted into QuickBooks. There's a link there that takes you into it. Um, and so the $5,000 that was in the asset clearing account is no longer in the asset clearing account as we've journaled it out of there and we've put it into computers at cost. So the balance sheet's now reflecting the same as asset accountant and the depreciation started as well for that asset. Okay, does that make sense for everyone? Hopefully that's all pretty clear. Um, I like it. Now I just need to wait on the shipping, right? <laughs> yeah, it's on the way. It's in the post. Um, okay, so what I will just jump to now, so I'll just start showing you the leasing functionality. So um, I'll show you how you enter a leased asset. So if you are entering, I'm just going to do this manually. So there are three ways you can enter assets. That's the, the way from QuickBooks I've just shown you. So let's just say we've got a new, oh, let's get, go on, let's get a new lease Tesla for it. Let's make it Christmas. Um, so I'm going to put that in for motor vehicles and then the start date for the lease. And then what I do for the lease payments is I've got a schedule here. So if I'm buying a car, so let's say we're actually buying a car here for $200,000. I'm going to make a $20,000 um, deposit. So that's a one-off payment. And then let's say I've got to pay $5,000 a month for the next uh, 30 months. Does that work? And then let's have a balloon at the end of, what's that? 30 times it's for, uh, so, okay, yeah. so let's say I've got $40,000 balloon. I've done my maths right. It's a one-off. And then I can generate that schedule. So it'll work out the interest rate for me or the implied interest rate. And then for each payment, it'll do the split between the principal and the interest as well. So, so that's how we do an asset that is purchased. Um, that would be in this case, we're financing a car worth $200,000. Um, if you're using a right of use asset, so if, you're, if, you, if it's um, something you're renting like office space, or a shop or um, some people use it for things like photocopiers where they're just renting them out and now you have to capitalize the net present value of those costs you can just put that percentage in there and it'll do all the calculations for you so you just need one of those numbers in there but let's say in this case i'm happy with um i'm happy with that so it's checking that i want to capitalize the two hundred thousand dollars to depreciate so I'm going to depreciate that for tax. Let's say I'm going to do that one se section 179 depreciation. Um, and yeah, let's say Brandon's going to look after his Tesla for five years. So he can do that for five years. And then I'll save that. That'll create a screen for this asset that looks very similar to the other to the other screen, except you'll see here it's got two sets of columns, one for the asset, which does the depreciation. And then it's got a lease liability column. So it actually manages the lease liability for you. So you can see the initial lease liability is 200,000. And then you're making a payment. And then what it's doing every month is calculating the interest accrual. And it'll post that to the PL in the journal. And then that will be backed out when you make the payment. So the interest gets reduced to zero. And then this is the, this is the outstanding amount after that payment. And then obviously there's another interest accrual each month. So it'll do that for you every month. And then in the journals, what you do, so I'll just create a, another journal for the end of September, and that will create the lease entry. So you can see here in the um, in the journal, it'll post to QuickBooks. It'll post a non-current lease liability and a current lease liability. Um, for those of you who do any lease accounting, you'll know you have to disclose what's payable within a year separately than what's payable in longer than a year. So it'll do that for you. And then every time you post a journal, it'll move the payment from 13 months out to 12 from non-current to current. So it'll do all of that for you as well. So all of those things to do with leasing are um, are taken care of through here. And then you can do various things in the, um, the asset screen now. So now I know I've got a lease in here, I can start adding other assets to leases. So we've got some clients that have multiple assets on a single lease that use us 
and um, you can refinance a lease. So it gets to the balloon and you need to refinance the balloon. People use it for that. You just put in the new payment schedule. Uh, and similarly for terminating a lease as well, if you need to terminate the lease early, then you can just do that through there in, um, in that screen. And then there's this lease schedule report that you can create as well. So this will um, this will create oops this will create the, the lease schedule report um, here. So you can get a full set of information about uh, each payment and what's interest and what's principal over the life of the lease and the, and the standing data there as well. Um, and then obviously the journals for that will post that into um, into QuickBooks as well. Um, okay, so just a couple of things in register settings. So there's some options here. You can have asset accounts and auto number assets. You can choose your currency, which accounting standards you want to do. You can have things like calculate your depreciation monthly and so on. Um, and then users, we've got three different types of user that you can have. So um, you can see here there's a registered guest. Um, a registered guest can only have read-only access, so they can come in and view the data, but they can't change anything. A registered user can manage the assets, so they can add new assets and they can dispose of them and so on. That's all they can do. Register managers then can invite other users in, and they can also change the settings of a register. So depending on the, the, the access rights you want to give somebody, all of those things are available. Classifications I talked about, so you can synchronize those with the classes and the locations in QuickBooks, or you can just manually add classifications here if you want to, um, to create things like locations or profit centers or cost centers. Um, and then integrations is just where you set up, connect the, uh, the system with, um, with QuickBooks. Um, so yeah, that's a quick run around of Asset Accountant. Um, and um, it, yeah, so it's, it's reasonably straightforward, I'm sure. Um, you probably found it quite intuitive as an interface. We, we don't get many support calls from users. I think most accountants or people who are familiar with assets are able to, to find their way around the system. So um, we've, been, we've been getting fairly good feedback on the, um, the interface and the usability of, of the system. So hopefully I just managed to give you a good flavor of that. So yeah, if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now or um, just hand back to Brendan. Yeah, no, I mean, I said this the first time we met, Mike, but it's like it's a, it's an easy way to handle something that can be really complex and take an inordinate amount of time. Like it, it comes up in accounting circles. It's like, oh, man, I, you know, I specialize in lease accounting or we've got this really troublesome. How do we sort this out? Right. And so obviously the system is far superior to trying to handle it in some yeah. offline platform like a spreadsheet. And then it's yeah, like yeah, just yeah. Wonky. you want it all in, in, in QuickBooks. Um, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the, a lot of accounting systems have some fixed asset capability, um, but generally it's fairly straightforward, and it will only deal with you know the the simple cases. So so it's usually where com where there's complexities and things like revaluations, impairments, or leases, like you say. Yeah, that people come to us or large registers as well. So um, we have a lot, especially zero clients. They they have a cap of like five hundred assets in zeros fixed asset module. So anything more than that, they tend to um, they tend to push people our way. So gotcha. we, we have, yeah, like I say, I mean, we have, we have registers with ten, tens of thousands of assets in, so. Very cool. Well, this also provides a good segue for me to tell one of my favorite accounting jokes, which is what did the overworked asset say to the other asset? <laughs> I, I, I feel under depreciated. <laughs> there you go. I'll be here all day. Um, <laughs> hey, let me, uh, I'll share my screen. I'll give you all a quick uh, run through of Uncat. Um, if you're not familiar with it already, and even if you are, maybe I'll show you a couple things that you, that you haven't seen before. Um, let's see, is it sharing? Yeah, there we go. So this is our website, uncat.com. Here's our, our famous cat riding a pony through the desert. So if you're at QuickBooks Connect in a couple months in Las Vegas, you will see our booth that will have that cat and I will be there. So definitely swing by the booth and come get a, a cat beanie baby and some other cool swag uh, from us. So Uncat's short for uncategorized. We specialize in helping accountants and bookkeepers fix uncategorized transactions with their clients. Um, it's just $5 a month but per client file. So it's a super easy app to get on board with. Um, we've really focused from the beginning on making it a time-saving app for you, but also for your clients. And that starts with making it easy because clients don't necessarily love 
the announcement of, hey, we have some new software for use. Um, Uncat doesn't feel that way to clients because all they have to do is click a link and it takes them straight into Uncat and they can respond to the transactions that need their attention. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, some fun little stats for when you're at the dinner table later and you're like, hey, I went to this webinar today uh, with a tall guy whose mascot was a cat riding a pony uh, and he shared some of this stuff with us. So one is across the data that we've seen, uh, the average business has about $10,000 US in uncategorized transactions every month. So it's substantial, right? That's, that's enough, there's enough money flowing through uncategorized expense, income, asset, ask my accountant, ask client, suspense, those types of accounts that it's meaningful, right, for most businesses. And so it's important to go in there and categorize. Uh, this is Uncat. We sync with QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, and Xero. Um, at a glance, we have about 15,000 users on the platform. Last year, uh, we did about 175,000 transactions categorized um, by our customers through Uncat, which is pretty cool. A lot of nice reviews on the QuickBooks App Store. It's kind of a, one of the main places uh, that you can read reviews. And, and obviously, like Mike said, both of our apps have a bunch of reviews there and we are both in the developer growth program. Um, and then there was this cool accountant bracket challenge. Some of you might've seen it back in March. It sort of coincided with March Madness for college basketball um, here in the US. And so uh, we were the winners of that bracket challenge, which was a ton of fun. Um, Popular sources of transactions. These will probably come as no surprise to you all. We see a lot of expenses flow through Uncat that are from Amazon, Walmart, Target, Costco, Home Depot, Lowe's, other big box stores, right? I mean, Amazon by itself has 12 million SKUs, 12 million individual products. So it's not surprising that for a lot of those, you need to ask the client, what was that for? Like, I, I see what you bought. Maybe there's even a receipt in the system, but I still need to know what the purpose of it was before we can put it in the right category. Uh, this is a rhetorical question. Everybody pretty much knows this already, but nevertheless, we put in the slide because sometimes it'll come up like, well, maybe I'll just leave the transactions in uncategorized. Well, what could happen? What's the big deal? Um, your budgets won't be accurate. Um, it's hard to generate meaningful financial reports. It's sort of a garbage in, garbage out issue. If everything's in Ask My Accountant and it's not in automobile and travel and et cetera, et cetera then it's hard to know where you're spending money and where you're receiving money if you've got uncategorized income. Um, obviously, avoiding audits is a nice thing or responding to them quickly with accurate data is great. If you leave a huge balance and ask my accountant, we've seen balances you know, over a million dollars. That's a pretty good trigger uh, for an audit and naturally helps you file accurate taxes and get all the allowable deductions and credits uh, that you might be due for that client when you, put it, when you know the purpose of a, of a transaction. Um, Uncat typically replaces, the short version of this slide is, we typically replace a spreadsheet. Most people will go in to QuickBooks, export a report of uncategorized in the form of a spreadsheet, email it to the client, wait for their response, kind of chase the client for information, get their response, maybe plus a bunch of separate files as attachments, and then manually copy paste each of their answers back into QuickBooks. So it tends to be a pretty time intensive process. And so we built an app to replace that. This is kind of a quick schematic of how our app works. We sync in transactions from QuickBooks. We notify the client, usually on a weekly cadence, works the best. We get their descriptions and receipts. You review them, categorize, sync back into QuickBooks. So it's a nice round trip that replaces all the manual work. Uh, getting started is easy. If you're on our website, you just click the get started for free. You'll come in, create an account with Uncap, no credit card required. Uh, you'll connect to QuickBooks or QuickBooks Desktop or Xero choose the first client file you want to connect, and then you put in that client's email address. And we'll send them an email on your behalf that says, hey, your accounting professional is inviting you to Uncat. Click here to go straight to your dashboard and review your transactions. So it's a really nice, easy onboarding. It'll take you about 30 seconds. Um, cost, just $5 a month per client file. So we sync unlimited transactions. You can have as many users as you want, client users and accounting users. And like uh, as with Asset Accountant that Mike showed, you can customize the app with your own firm name and logo and color. That way when the client shows up, they know they know it's you. Um, right, let me show you the app. So when the client clicks that link, it'll take them to a dashboard that looks like this, which probably looks pretty familiar to the spreadsheet they've been receiving in the first place. So it's easy. They don't need a lot of training to figure out what to do. Instead, it's just, hey, here's this square deposit for 68 bucks. Who is this from? What was it for? Why did they pay you? 
So we're asking the client for a description and then optionally, and especially for expenses, we're asking for an attachment. Hey, do you have a receipt for this big transaction at Costco or this next transaction from Amazon? So the description is required by default. Receipt is optional. A lot of firms in Canada, UK will require a receipt because it might be required for tax purposes in that jurisdiction. Here, here by default, it's optional. So once they put in a description, optionally a receipt, they'll click save updates. That transaction is in, that information is going to sync into QuickBooks. So the description goes to the description field. Attachment goes in as an attachment on that transaction. It'll disappear from the client dashboard because now their homework is done. They can go back to continuing to grow their business. And we're going to send you a daily digest that tells you how many clients have made updates and how many updates did they make. So, hey, you got 70 clients that updated 53 transactions. And you'll be able to click through and go to your dashboard and see what they did. So here you can read the descriptions they added to these transactions. You can click through and look at any attachments they uploaded. And based on the client response, you can come in and choose an appropriate class. Obviously, you can categorize. That's priority number one. So this syncs in the chart of accounts for this client. And then you can even see additional fields like billable tax, customer, location. So you can make all your field assignments here. Click Save. That transaction will then sync into QuickBooks all the information that you just updated, and it will disappear from your Uncat dashboard, and you can kind of move on to the next set of transactions. Um, as you would expect, you can kind of slice and dice this dashboard however you want. So you can click on any column to sort by amount of transaction or by source account or by date. Um, you can also scroll down and see additional clients. So once you finish with client one, come down to client two, three, four, et cetera. There's folks that have a handful of clients on Uncat. There's firms that have hundreds of clients. It's easy to navigate around. You can always come up here and jump straight to a client by just typing their name and clicking enter. It'll take you straight to it. Uh, you can also search for transactions. If I want to like look at the Amazon ones first and categorize them and, and move on, I can do that. You can select a transaction if I need to split it by account or by class. You can do that from Uncat, save it into QuickBooks. You can also select multiple transactions here. I'll just grab these two. And this becomes a bulk menu. So now you can like bulk apply a class or a location or some other tidbit here. And that way, it's a time saver, right? Just like you can do in your general ledger. You can do it in Uncat, and we'll sync it into the GL uh, with your work done. So that's kind of a quick overview of the Uncat dashboard. Um, this is a feature we added mid-summer called requests. Uh, a lot of firms, their clients are coming into Uncat really reliably every week, right? That's why we built it. And so they had a few additional things they wanted to ask the client for that were not transaction related. So here, if you want to ask a client for a bank statement for last month, a W-9 for a particular vendor, some other document or response to some question, you can just click to create a new client request. And you can require a response, an attachment, or both. And that way, when the client comes into Uncat, they'll see the notifications for not only their uncategorized transactions, but also any outstanding requests that you have for them. They can upload files here and you'll see them in your dashboard. So that's pretty convenient. Um, client settings usually answer the next two or three questions, which is like, how do these transactions get here anyway? How far back did you sync? How does the client get notified? Here are the accounts that we're syncing for this client. You can always choose as many accounts or as few as you want to sync from QuickBooks. So here's the full chart of accounts. You can select all the accounts that have transactions that you want to sync in on an automatic basis going forward. These are pretty popular choices, right? Ask my accountant, uncategorized expense, et cetera. You can also choose how far back you want to sync. So by default, Uncat syncs back three months. So if you connect a client today, we'll grab September, August, July. If you need to go back further than that, let's say it's a new client and you want to clean up the books for 2023, you can sync back, let's say, to January 1st of 23. Just come in here and change the date. If there, for any additional month beyond the default three, we just bill you one time $5 per month. So if we were going back to the beginning of 2023, it would just be six months times five, so an additional 30 bucks. Pretty easy, and a lot of people use Uncat for cleanups, whether it's a new client where you need to go back in time to sort of get everything straight, or at tax time, or at end of year. Uh, a lot of people will clean up the books uh, through our app. Uh, notification settings, we by default send out client notifications weekly. That tends to work the best. A lot of firms historically on a monthly cadence, right, for the spreadsheet at the start of a month for the previous month, and the challenge there is that sometimes the client will not remember some of those transactions. And so to get over that hurdle, we send notifications weekly. It's because almost everybody can remember like, oh yeah, I spent that last week, or I got that deposit from Square or Stripe or PayPal last week. 
I remember what that was for. Once it's been 30 days, sometimes it can be a bigger memory challenge. So you can choose the period. Uh, you can even notify daily if you want to for a really high volume client or monthly. Uh, and then you can choose day of the week that you want them to receive it. We'll only email our transactions that need their attention. Otherwise, we're not going to bother them with the notification. Uh, the other thing you can do that I'll show you in a minute is add a phone number for a client user, and we'll send the notification by email as well as by text message. And that works really well. Everyone's got a client or several clients that isn't really on top of email. Maybe it doesn't even check email anymore. And so sending the notification by text message, really effective way to make sure they're aware of it and they can click through and update transactions from their phone. So they can tap in descriptions, upload attachments from their camera roll or their files on their phone and click save. And that's a really popular way for clients to use Uncat. This is where you control the dashboard for this client. So here you can see the description is required, attachments optional. But if you want the client to do more, you, want to, you have some additional questions you want to ask, here's where you can turn this on and you can decide which fields are visible, which ones are editable, and which ones are required. So in this example now, we're not only asking the client for description for every transaction, we're also asking them to assign a class and to categorize every transaction. It's required now. And so when the client does that and click Save, it'll then sync into QuickBooks. It'll show up on your dashboard. You can review the account that they chose for that particular transaction. And if it's all good, you can click Approve. No change needed. If the client's made an error, you can correct it and sync over the top into QuickBooks. That way you've got eyes on it in case you need to make any changes. And then lastly, these are the client users. So for some uh, small businesses, it's just going to be one owner or a couple co-founders. Um, here's an example where there's four users. The admin user is going to see all the transactions. Other users, though, if you want to, you can restrict their view to only see certain transactions. So a pretty popular use case is, hey, for this user, we only want them to see uncategorized expenses that originated on their credit card. They're out in the field. They're a regional sales director. They should be able to respond for their credit card, but they don't need visibility into what's happening at headquarters. They don't know what those expenses are for. So here we've assigned this user to only see those transactions on their credit card. And that's pretty popular. A lot of people will use Uncat that way to control which users can update which transactions. So that's client settings. Overall settings, if you click settings in the top right, it'll show you a list of the clients that you've connected to Uncat. It'll show you a list of your colleagues that you've invited to use Uncat as accountant workers. So here, a firm admin can do everything in the application, obviously. A client admin can invite client users and update client settings, but they're not going to handle the billing, and they're not going to do assignments of users. Uh, and a team member is updating transactions in the dashboard. So they'll see the client updates. They'll be able to categorize transactions, but they're not going to touch any settings. And here, if you want to, inside your firm, you can assign particular clients to particular users. If you leave this blank, this user can see all the clients. But if you want to restrict a user to only see certain clients, you can select them here. That way, when they go into their dashboard, they'll just see the clients that they, that they work with. They'll also only get notified about those clients that they're assigned to. Last but certainly not least, this is where you can upload your logo, change the color of the app right, to match your brand. This is where your firm name goes. That way, when clients show up, they see, oh, yeah, this is the firm I work with. I like this service. This is great. And that's pretty much it. That's the grand tour of Uncat. You can't get lost. It's just a couple pages. You can get all set up in a matter of minutes, and it makes it really easy for clients to respond. So we get nice feedback from clients like, oh, this is so much better than receiving a spreadsheet once a month. I can just go in and update any time, and I can remember what the stuff is, and I can upload receipts, and it all syncs into QuickBooks. Certainly from the accountant bookkeeper side of the fence, it's a lot better than having to remember to do all those exports, to chase the clients for information, and then copy paste all their responses back in. That's uh, my co-founder, Adam, and his firm here in Knoxville called Two Roads uh, got really tired of that process. So that was the impetus to build the app uh, three years ago. And uh, thankfully, a lot of other firms have, have taken it up because it's saving them a lot of time too. All right, let me jump back and see if there are any questions at all. More than happy to answer them. Um, if not, then the coolest cats in accounting may take a cat nap. That might be the, <laughs> that might be the end of the webinar. But if you have any questions, if you if you want to get started with Asset Accountant, you get 10 assets for free. So super easy to get started and just set up your account and get going. With Uncat, it's a two-week free trial. You can come in, add as many clients, as many users as you want. I always say, I've been in the software game for a while at a previous software company, as with any product, but certainly with software. The proof of the pudding's in the eating. You try it out. 
right? Make it work for you. See if you have any questions as you go. They've got their cat bot, but you also know Mike directly. So if you have any questions about Asset Accountant, uh, they're there to help. Any questions about Uncat, just shoot me a note, brandon at uncat.com. We've also got a little chat built into the site where you can reach me at any time. So yeah, we hope that on behalf of both our apps, we hope they save you a ton of time and keep things organized. Uh, you know, business and accounting full stop is is hard enough. So hopefully the software you know, saves you hours a month and you can focus on kind of higher level uh, strategic advisory on behalf of your clients. I'll pause there for a second in case there's a last minute question. Otherwise, Mike, anything you want to add before we take our cat? No, that was great. Thanks everybody for turning up and listening to us hope you uh, hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it and as brandon said there's um you can take get 10 assets for, assets for free on asset accounts and or um if you need more than that there is a 30-day free trial as well so and uh brandon and i love the idea of changing the color palette yourself i've never seen that in uh, an app before i think that's brilliant. oh yeah that's popular all pretty much everybody that yeah. uses uncat will choose yeah. the color from their <laughs> logo right yeah, so they'll great. either kind of kind of toggle toward it or, or more, most people know kind of the hex code that corresponds yep. to their color. And so, yeah, it's a nice little yeah, nice that's a little nice touch. feature. Yeah. feature. <laughs> Love it. Well, hey, like Mike said, thank you all uh, for coming. If you have any follow-up questions, let us know. I'll circulate the presentation uh, to everybody once the recording is downloaded. So you'll get a copy if you want to share it with anybody, uh, colleagues in your firm or just friends. Uh, spread the good word. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye.